The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Greetings, my dear students. You are welcome to this teaching session. I am Eckert C. Boris Breeze, a teacher of analytical chemistry. So, we will be treating analytical chemistry for the Form 7 class. And the content of this presentation goes thus. We will start with the general presentation of the syllabus, followed by the objectives and the targeted competencies. And we are going to present the prerequisites. Now, my dear students, concerning the syllabus of analytical chemistry in Form 7, there were six main models. We have calorimetry, we have conductivity, potentiometry, spectrophotometry, we have chromatography, and tubidimetry. Let's now look at the various lessons that make up each model. For instance, the first model, calorimetry, contains three lessons. The first lesson is generality on bomb calorimetry. After that, the next lesson is on calculation of heat of react, rate of combustion and microcalorimetry. The second model, conductimetry, has the following as the declined lessons. The first is generality and principle on conductimetry measurement. And after that, we have calculation in conductimetry, followed with by conductimetry titration. The third is having two lessons. The first is on generality on potentiometry. And the last lesson under that model is potentiometry titration. Under the fourth, which is spectrophotometry, we have the as first lesson AAS, that is atomic absorption spectro spectroscopy. Then, flame emission spectroscopy and techniques of analysis in atomic spectroscopy followed by introduction to UV, UV visible spectroscopy, that is ultraviolet and titration by UV visible spectroscopy. The next lesson after that is generalities on infrared spectroscopy. Then we are going to see the setup and the principle of measurement in infrared spectroscopy. And we'll conclude with the interpretation of the infrared spectra. With the next lesson, the next model has as lessons. The introduction to chromatography, the paper chromatography, the column chromatography, and the generality on gas chromatography. Now, the next one we have the 
qualitative and quantitative analysis on gas chromatography. My dear student, we have to be to be generality and principle of to be symmetric analysis, and we have to be symmetric titration. What are the objectives and the targeted competencies? My dear students, by the end of these syllables, you should be able to apprehend the methods on number one, identification, characterization, and quantification of chemical substances. The prerequisites for this program are you are supposed to have grounded knowledge on number one, calculation of solution concentrations. Next, preparation of solutions. We have electromagnetic radiations and redox reactions. My dear students, we will start the program with the first topic, which is on calorimetry. The topic here is declined in two subtopics, the bone calorimetry and the micro calorimetry. And these two subtopics are to be presented in three lessons. The generality on bone calorimetry, we have determination of heat of combustion and measurement of heat of reaction. Now, these three lessons will be taught in six presentations. Let's look at the first lesson, which is generality on bomb calorimetry. The lesson is going to be presented starting with the objectives. Next, the prerequisites. We are going to see the professional situation that will help us to understand the learning activities and will be followed by the application exercise and will end the lesson with homework. What are the objectives of this lesson? By the end of this lesson, my dear student, you are supposed to be able to give the setup of a bomb calorimeter and precise the role of each element. The next, you should be able to describe the principle of measurement in bomb calorimetry. And after that, you are supposed to be able to adequately calibrate a bomb calorimeter. As what concerns the prerequisite, for what concerns the prerequisite, before commencing this lesson, you are supposed to recall notions on combustion, combustible, and oxidizer. Also, on thermic nature of reactions, that is, endothermic and exothermic. Okay, we have this professional situation, my dear students that will usher us into the learning activities. Now, they are telling us, in his end of year project, a Form 7 student formulated balfours from plants, from plant extracts. He used bomb calorimeter to characterize the formulated balfours. To meet his goal, he first needed to calibrate the calorimeter. Let's look at the questions that follow. The first question, you are asked to justify the calibration of bomb calorimeter. Next, you are asked to precise the quantity of the quantity determined from the operation, that is from the calibration. And next, justify the role of benzoic acid in the calibration of a bomb calorimeter. And we also have, 
They are asking you to describe the principle of measurement in bomb calorimeter. And finally, justify the use of oxygen during an analysis by bomb calorimeter. Now, as before starting, we are going to start the lesson with the definition of some key concepts so long as bomb calorimeter is concerned. Let's start with the first one. What is calorimetry, my dear students? Calorimetry can be defined as the study of the heat either absorbed or released by a system. Or we can define it as the study of heat exchange in a system. The next term is the calorific power. What is the calorific power? The calorific power here is the necessary heat absorbed by a system to raise its temperature by one degree. The necessary heat absorbed by a system to raise the temperature of that same system by one degree. Okay, the next term we are going to define, the next concept is calorimeter. What is therefore a calorimeter? A calorimeter, my dear student, is an apparatus used for calorimetric analysis. When we use any, the, the, the instrument or the apparatus that we use for a calorimetric analysis is known as a calorimeter. These are some of the examples of calorimeters that we have. For instance, this first type of calorimeter is known as the PAR 1341 calorimeter. And on the other side, we have the GDYIA calorimeter. They are calorimeters. We should also note here that there are two main types of calorimetry. We have the bomb calorimetry and the micro calorimetry. We are going to see in this lesson the bomb calorimetry. Here we have the various components of a bomb calorimetry. In here we will start with the oxygen bomb itself. This is the oxygen bomb and to the oxygen bomb a, the oxygen bomb here, a, 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 the reaction takes place in the oxygen bomb. To the oxygen bomb are connected two electrodes, as we can see. The electrodes there are there to ignite the reaction. And we can also see here a thermometer. The thermometer here is used to record the temperature rise of the water that is found in the bucket. And we have the stirrer. The stirrer is used to stir the water in order to evenly distribute heat. That those are the various components of a bomb calorimeter. Now let's look at the bomb itself. The bomb here is a very important component of the calorimetry. Let's look at the interior part. In the interior part here, the first thing we need to know is that we have the sample carrier. The sample carrier here is held by two elect by the we have first the filling the oxygen the inlets through which we fill oxygen so the bomb here this empty space here is filled with oxygen this is the oxygen in the empty space through this orifice now the next thing present there is we can see a thread that is attached to the sample carrier. This thread is used to make sure that the two electrodes that are present are 
link. It is used to link these two electrodes present in the bomb calorimeter. We also have another important component up here, which is the evacuation of oxygen. The evacuation of oxygen. The oxygen that we feel in the bomb can be evacuated through this orifice. This is the general view of the interior part of the bomb calorimeter. Let's now look at the principle of measurement of bomb calorimeter. How is it done? The first thing is that we place our sample in the bomb. This is our sample that we place in the, on the sample carrier. And after that, we turn on the ignition. That is going to help the two, through the two electrodes that are present, reaction of, is going to occur, the combustion of the sample will occur in the bomb calorimeter. And after that, when that is done, we have heat is going to be generated and that heat is evenly distributed in the water through our sterile. Then we have our thermometer to read the temperature of the water. What is therefore calibration, the aim of calibration of a thermometer? Why do we need to calibrate a thermometer. We should note here that we calibrate a thermometer in order to determine the amount of heat absorbed by the system or by the calorimeter. And remember that amount of heat absorbed is known as the calorific capacity. Therefore, the aim of calibrating a calorimeter is to determine the calorific capacity of the calorimeter. We use a, a sample, a compound, in the calibration, and that compound is known as a standard. So the standard used in calibrating a bomb calorimeter is benzoic acid. You may ask me, why is it that we use benzoic acid? It's because it has a known and a, thick, a stable heat of absorption. And this is the structure of benzoic acid. The heat there is 6,301 calorie, calorie per gram. So that is the reason we use it as a standard, a reference. The structure of the benzoic acid is, as you see there, so it is an aromatic compound. And it exists in the laboratory in tablet form, as you can see it there. My dear students, how do we prepare a sample for measurement? The first thing is, we place the sample, the sample which is the standard in our sample carrier as you can see there and after that we connect the wire to the two electrodes these are the two electrodes here and it is zoomed in this place in this area we connect our wire to the two electrodes in such a way that the, it touches the sample in the sample carrier. The next step is we need to fill our bomb with oxygen. What are the what do we need to know so long as this step is concerned? The first thing we have our pure oxygen bottle, which is this. And we now connect the pipe, the outlet of the bottle, to the inlet of the bomb. Then we open the valve of the bottle. And after that, 
we will adjust the pressure on manometer one as we can see there then we start filling the bomb by you by using by operating the filling button that we have here and finally we record the pressure on the second manometer how do we now fill the bucket with water or how we how do we place the bomb in the calorimeter the next step is to fill the bucket with water this is the bucket here placed in the calorimeter we fill it with water and we now place the bomb that we have filled with oxygen in the water then the next step is we start the steering we press on the steering button on the bomb calorimeter and after that we start up the ignition by pressing on the fire button on the calorimeter and when the reaction starts the temperature of the water is going to increase and we can now record the change in temperature in function of time when this is done we can and the temperature is read on this display screen when we have now that we know that this, the measurement is complete so my dear students coming to the end of this what are you supposed to retain the first thing you are supposed to know that the bomb calorimetry is an instrumental analytical method used in the determination of heat of combustion of diverse samples so when we want to determine the heat of combustion of samples we use the bomb calorimetry as a technique now the next thing you are supposed to know here is that before any measurement my dear student the calorimeter must be calibrated why do we calibrate the thermometer in order to determine the calorific power the next thing you are supposed to know is that this operation is done using a standard which is benzoic acid and why do we use benzoic acid here because it, its heat of combustion is known and it is stable let's now look at this application exercise in his end of year project a form 7 student formulated biofuels from plant extracts he used this bomb calorimeter to determine or to characterize the formulated biofuel my dear student, they are telling us that to meet his goal, he first needs to calibrate the thermometer, the calorimeter. What is the first question? The first question is justify the importance of calibration of bomb calorimeter. What do we say is the use of the importance of calibrating a bomb calorimeter? We say that we calibrate a bomb calorimeter in order to determine the, the, the heat that it will absorb. The heat that we will absorb. That is the aim of calibrating a thermometer. Its ability to absorb heat. Next precise the quantity determined from this operation so when we calibrate a thermometer what is the quantity that we determine of course we saw that we determine the calorific power of that bomb calorimeter this is it here so we carry out our calibration to determine the calorific power of the bomb calorimeter the next thing, 
justify the use of benzoic acid during calibration of bomb calorimeter. Why do we use benzoic acid? Remember, we said that we use benzoic acid because it is a standard and its heat of combustion is known and it is stable. So that is why we use it as our standard for calibration. My dear student, describe the principle of measurement of in bomb calorimetry. You are supposed to note as the principle is that first the heat source with, with the heat source combustion takes place when the two electrodes are connected with a wire which is in contact with the sample and when that is done there is a change in temperature in the of the water that is found in the bucket and this temperature is measured with respect to time that is the principle of measurement in bomb calorimetry, my dear students. Now, justify the use of oxygen during analysis by bomb calorimetry. Why do we use oxygen? We use oxygen because it is an oxidizer. That is what it is. We, we use oxygen because that's what it that's what is the substance that permits combustion. Remember, combustion only takes place in the presence of oxygen. It is our oxidizer. You will have now, my dear student, this assignment that you are going to do at home to ask to permit you to test your level of assimilation. The assignment goes thus. A dietitian solicits your services to determine the energetic value of a food. To achieve this, you use an oxygen bomb calorimeter of type PAR 1341, whose diagram is given in the next slide. This is the diagram here. This is the bomb calorimeter part 1341. These are the various components. The, the numbers here represent the various components of the bomb. What is, what are the questions? The first question is, identify element 6, 7, 10 and 11 in the diagram. Next, Justify the presence of element 6, 7, and 10 in the bomb calorimeter. And finally, explain why they require your present needs to be. Explain why the required pressure needs to be respected when filling the bomb calorimeter. Why is it that we need to respect the required pressure? Now, my dear student, I thank you for your keen attention. We have come to the end of this presentation. And our next class, in our next class, we are going to trade generality on bomb calorimetry, the second part. <laughs> Una tege majang matege ndom mane tambia ninya ne njubya yen ngani bana matege mot ngani la kiri watege ndong esetina bia dinki do mane tambia ninya ne njubya yen tam tama mote tam zabike tam tama tonge tam zabike tam tam tama mote tam zabike mane tambia ninya ne njubya yen 